This is the sundial, the digital sundial, a very cool project of the universe. And as you can see, I'm printing it about as gigantic as possible. I'm going to turn off my useless ender that never works. Um, there you can see. I had a small error in that corner. You can see it's only really getting material down now that it's higher. I believe that error is because there was no glue stick there and also a slight imperfection in the height of the glass. So, and obviously it's a spot that's not measured for mesh leveling. So, it's not the end of the world. Actually, there were a few, few corners like that that I snuck some glue stick on. And like I said, what's it gives it that extra stickiness to get the filament to grab, but what it still has that's nice is the, the great release. So release, it's a little snug, but it definitely comes off. It's definitely not like the trowel and hammer against a brick kind of thing that you get uh, against Biltac. This is going to be a really long print. That's at 100%. I don't know why it's so slow. Just taking its time, it's a real tricky print. I did the first layer at 30%. I think it's about, I can zoom in now, yeah, it's 0 0.7 height. So it's got, uh, this is the second layer, the first layer is 0 0.4, and then it's 0 0.3 after that. It's gonna be a few hours. This might take 10 hours. Really, if your print head's moving and you've got good sticking, I mean, you're gonna get your print. And that's why I think the ender is so frustrating because fighting and fighting and fighting. It's just, uh, I know I can get it to stick on Biltac, but I don't wanna struggle with that release and Biltac wears out pretty quick. And then it doesn't stick. So, I think maybe the JG Aurora E5, it was an A5, is, um, I asked Chris from Neris um, video if, um, if he liked the Aurora or the A10. And a few people now have come out and said, well, we faulted the Aurora, but really, it's actually a pretty darn good printer. And I think if you put on a little more bra side bracing, that's all it needs to be absolutely perfect. It comes with, a, an, with an ultra base like surface. It's almost as big as a CR10. I'll probably have to try one um, and send the ender back. And then um, if, that, if that doesn't work, it's just gonna be a pile of deltas. They are a bitch to get working. They take forever to set up, but once you get them dialed in, just seem to have so many advantages. I think the biggest advantage, and I've said this before, is the ability to see the nozzle. Oops! Yes, it's scraping through a little. That's just a height issue. That happens. It happens because sometimes the filament is a little thick when it dries. This is with no fan shroud, by the way, nothing, not a zero, because I have to custom design a taller one. This is the Micro Swiss stainless steel nozzle, which is wonderful. I'll never touch brass again. Brass is for losers. Brass is for poor people. Real people use stainless steel. It's, it's, like I said, it's a 0 0.5, so that gives us an advantage on the first layer. can go up to 0 0.4, no problem. And that usually sorts out any layer, layer height issues with um, bed crashing, which is much more an issue on a fixed bed like this. This is a very accurate, finicky print, so if it works out, I'm going to be really happy. One thing I do like is the accuracy of this printer is amazing. It just has such precision. 
Unlike Mr. Wobbly over here with the single rail. Why did they design like that? I, I think they're just kidding themselves. All right. And where are all my failure prints? I think I threw them out already. Yeah, this guy. This guy, he's a handful. And everything's adjusted right. Yeah, the bed leveling is perfect. It just, it's just screwy.